Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about loops inside of JavaScript. Now, this is a follow-up to the previous video, so if you want the conceptual part of this video, go to the previous video. But overall, this video will cover most of what you need, so it's, it's, it's not too hard. But if, if you're struggling with this content, then you might wanna check out the previous video. And you know what else you should also check out? Our sponsor, Dev Mountain. So Dev Mountain offers classes in JavaScript-based web development, as well as other stuff such as iOS and, and lots of other things. But the, the benefit of going through something like Dev Mountain is that they give you what you need to survive in the industry. So if you basically want to jumpstart your career and get in a good job in JavaScript web development, then you need to check out Dev Mountain. Mainly, they're a very career-centric bootcamp. They have housing at no additional cost, and basically you can get what can take you years to study on your own in a matter of weeks. So going through this can really speed up the process. Highly recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. And now let's get back to loops. So the three types of loops, we have a while loop, a do while loop, and a for loop. And all of these loops usually have three pieces. And I remember these using the acronym ICU, as I mentioned in the previous video. So we have an initialization, we have a condition, and then we have an update. So let's go through an example with a while loop because it follows these steps in order, very easy to see. We start with a variable, we'll just create um, I. This is also known as an iterator sometimes, basically a variable to keep track of where we are in a loop. And we start it at zero. Ugh, if I could type, there we go. Then we say while, and then we put the code block like so. Now inside of the parentheses is where we make a condition. So we could say I less than 10. And what this will do is it'll make a loop that goes 10 times because at the end of our while loop, what we're going to do is we're gonna say I plus plus. So basically we start at zero and then every single time through the loop, we increase I by one resulting in a loop that goes through this 10 times then our actual code goes here. So the actual pieces, this is the initialization, this is the condition, and this is the update. So now you can kind of see the steps. And the code, we can do whatever we want. Let's just do a console log. I can hear my dog out outside of my room getting into trouble, so <laughs> I might have to step away in a second. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're just going to console log i and each time through this loop, it'll print I and we'll see which loop iteration we're in. So let's do a refresh. And you can see it goes from zero to nine. So this loop will actually go through the, the process 10 times, zero being the first, nine being the 10th. You can alter these different pieces to make the loop function in different ways. So for example, if we wanted to go from one to 10, we could start I at one and we could say less than 11. Do a refresh and we get one to 10. You can also change the operators here. So for example, if you don't like the less than operator, you could say less than or equal to, make this 10, and now it's still going to go up to 10. Works exactly the same way, it's totally up to you. By personal preference, I like to keep everything as the less than or greater than, and then I like to just change the numbers accordingly. You can also do whatever you want inside of the code. So this can be great to go through the elements of an array, or if you want to print something a certain number of times. This is what loops are for. And as we go into some more of the examples of loops in the next video, it'll become more obvious of what you might wanna use these loops for. But now it's just important to understand the structure. So that is a while loop. Now let's talk a little bit about the do while loop. So I'm going to comment this out. The do while loop looks like this. You say do, and then you create your code block. So this is where your code goes, and then you say while and you put the semicolon. Now remember you need to have that semicolon there. That's one of the things that takes some time to get used to because with this while loop here, you don't really put a semicolon after that. You just put the curly brace and there's not really a semicolon anywhere besides where your code is. So it can take a little bit of time to get used to and make sure you remember that semicolon, but you don't wanna forget it or uh, you'll get fired. <laughs> okay, so now what exactly is going on here? Well, we're gonna start with an initialization still. So we'll say let i equal zero. And then what we can do is we do something at least once. So if we do console.log and we put i in here, and then what we do is we do the comparison down here. So we'll say while i is less than 10. So when we do a refresh, 
oh shoot yeah you gotta do the uh, increment don't forget that so at the end of this you gotta do i plus plus so here's the initialization initialization here's the code here's the update close enough <laughs> and here's the condition all right so the, the, the things are just a little bit out of order so let's do a refresh there we go guys, sorry about that. <laughs> you definitely wanna make sure you have that update in there or you will produce an infinite loop, <laughs> a loop that goes on forever until your computer basically explodes. So the only difference here is that these steps are a little bit out of order and this do is going to execute always at least once. Meaning if we set i equal to a thousand, you can see that this condition is not going to evaluate to true. So it's not going to go back and execute this section but the do comes first, so that's always going to be executed at least once. So let's do a refresh and see what happens. When we do a refresh, we get it printed once, and then the while is evaluated to false, and it's done. So that's the difference between the, the uh, while loop and the do while loop. The last type of loop I wanna to talk to you guys about is the for loop, so I'm going to go over that now. I'm going to bring this down here. So comment that out. Now the for loop is nice because it kind of puts everything in one spot. It's a lot easier to read over time when you get used to the syntax. At least in my opinion, I like for loops. They're nice and, and concise. So we basically follow the same steps, initialization, condition, and update, but they all go one after the other inside of these parentheses separated by a semicolon. So we can say, let's, uh, let's create i, which is equal to zero. i is less than 10. I plus plus, and um, say lat there. Console log, and in here we're just gonna log I. Let's do a refresh, and you can see zero to nine. Boom, simple as that. So I like to use the for loops for things that I know how many times I'm going to do them. Like I know I want to do 10 times here, and I like to do the while loops when I don't know, so indefinitely until I say stop, basically. And then I like to use the do while loops for things that happen at least once. So those are the kind of different use cases for each of these loops. In the next video, we're going to go over some useful examples of what these loops can do beyond just counting from zero to nine. <laughs> so hopefully you guys are looking forward to the next video. I'll see you guys then. And don't forget to subscribe as that'll help out this channel. All right, peace out.